Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Module 16. This is going to be a quick walkthrough, plus I want to highlight a couple of things that are new and different. We're going to try something out new here in this module, and you guys get to be the first <laughs> class that is going to go through um, a little bit of a different way of interacting with Python within the online class. So let's head on over to the beginning here. So for the introduction, um, in this module, we do not have any anything in your textbook that goes over this section specifically, but I think this is a really important piece of information to cover explicitly. So you're going to see a lot more text information from me, especially here, even just on the landing page for module 16. We are focused on ArcPy using that to query and select our GIS data. So this is going to be querying and selecting both by attributes and also by spatial location. So this is just going to be a brief introduction to you about what attribute queries and spatial queries are, things that you have done many times in your GIS classes. And it's just going to walk you through the concept of an attribute query, the concept of a spatial query, and then also the concept of combining these attribute and spatial queries, which is the same order of events that we're going to walk through with the entire module. So make sure you read through this landing page here, and you're going to see here again all of our objectives for this module. Um, notice that your learning resources are just on Canvas, and that you do not need your textbook for this portion. All right, the first part here is learning about SQL queries. So in your introductory GIS classes, you should have learned about SQL queries, but we're going to cover them again because you are not going to have a tool in a desktop GIS software that you can use to kind of push buttons and build your queries. You're going to need to understand and be more familiar with building them yourself. So there's going to be a, a short little video here about what is SQL, how to build attribute queries using SQL, and then down here in our activities for SQLs where we're getting into a little bit of new technology within this class. So in the activities here, you're going to build queries that you've seen in these videos. Um, and I'm going to give you a screenshot of the table that I want you to build the query off of. And then I'm going to give down here. So notice this is something called Trinket. You're welcome to go and create your own Trinket account if you want but it's not required in order to be able to use these interactive windows on here. However, if you want to be able to save out some of the code that you're going to write in here, you would need to create a Trinket account, and then it would give you the option to save out some of your code. But you can also just copy it right here, swipe it and copy it and paste it into an idle and save it there if you were wanting to, or you can always take a screenshot of what you do here. But you're going to notice that in each of these activities, I have given you some instructions in this little trinket window. So this trinket window, I've said we want to make sure we're, we're coding in Python 3. This is not going to have any access to ArcPy. You cannot import the ArcPy module here. This is just really a bare bones Python idle that I've been able to embed into the class so that you can type into this window and not have to open up idle separately. So what you're going to do here is just you're going to just practice in this interactive window, typing in an SQL query to select North Oaks Park from the above table. So up here, you'll see that there's a park name and you'll be able to read here through multiple different park names. So I give you also an example for each of these. So here's an example SQL query that would select out Mabel Davis Park. And you can see that Mabel Davis is the first record here. So I've given you the proper SQL query syntax here, having the park name is equal to Mabel Davis. I've given you some information down here of things to take note of. And now I've just asked you to type in your query, paying special attention to the spelling and quotation marks. Now there's also nothing that you're going to turn in from these activities. All right, so these activities are for your benefit to practice structuring these SQL queries. The more you type them in and think through the logic, the easier your activities later on in this module are going to be. So while you don't have to turn anything in from these activities, these windows are here for you, for you to learn. So you need to be able to type into them and you need to be able to practice these SQL queries and the logic. So down here is when you're going to do it's the very same thing. You're going to go into what was next to talk about in the video, which is using SQL queries and incorporating wildcards. So the same thing, you're going to be given a task to do, an example that is similar to it, and then you're going to be asked to type in your query below. Then you're going to query for null and empty records in um, SQL. 
And here you're gonna, there's two things you need to pay attention to, and this will become clear after the video that this gets done differently if you're using shapefiles as opposed to geodatabases. So you're gonna be able to practice that here with shapefiles and with geodatabases. And remember, I'm giving you right here an example that has everything structured properly. So you'll be able to see everything that you need to do with whatever task I've asked you. So you have a, a, a very clear example of what it should look like, just whatever I've asked you, whatever field I've asked you should be replaced inside of there. And then the last one here is going to be to query using and and or, our Boolean logic there. And so you're gonna learn how to structure a query. You've already learned in the video how to do it, but this is where you get to type in and actually practice with it. So that muscle memory of typing that in. Okay, the last thing here, oh, I apologize, four wasn't the last thing, five is. Five is the last one where you're gonna build a proper SQL query, um, pretending like you're in ArcPy, right? So I've told you that you can't import ArcPy here. You're not gonna be executing or running anything in any of these trinket windows. It's just for you to type in and build the structure of your SQL query. But this last one, after you become comfortable with the SQL query itself, here is where you're going to learn how to do the proper syntax for an SQL query when you're within your ArcPy program. So there's some nuance here with using our quotation marks that you'll learn about in the video and you'll practice with executing here um, down here. There's a couple of different ways and you get to choose the one that you want to move forward with in the class or you can bounce back and forth, whatever you're most comfortable with. But here's where you're going to practice with all of that. All right, so that's using Trinket and this is the only module page that uses it. So I'm interested to hear what your feedback is on that. If you like Trinket or not, please let me know um, because we'll try and see if maybe we can introduce it into an earlier part of the class for the next people who take the class. All right, the next thing we're going to learn about is selection tools in Arc, uh, GIS and how they work in ArcPy. So what we're going to accomplish in these activities are things that you are well versed at doing within the desktop GIS software. So I'm going to hearken back to that and I want you to think about how you do this in ArcGIS and then we're going to translate all of those operations over how do you do that within ArcPy. So after this, you're gonna to start to learn specifically about how to do attribute queries in ArcPy. You're gonna watch a short video that explains the concepts and goes through a demonstration of a script. Then you're gonna have an activity. In this activity, you are going to write the demonstration script that you saw in this video. So I'm, it's going to be a guided activity. So I'm gonna guide you through each of the steps you do need to have access to the EX07 folder from your textbook. So we're using data from chapter seven. So that exercise that you just completed in chapter seven, know where that is and that's gonna become your workspace for these scripts. So you'll just notice here that this is very stepped out. I give you a lot of text here. What we're doing is we'll, we're building the general steps and the logic of our scripts. So here you're just gonna go through and I would recommend typing in everything that you see here. Okay, so you just wanna, and I have made it so you can't copy and paste because it's important that you do the typing and understand um, what it is, everything that you're typing in here. You also need to identify the tools and their syntax. Remember, when we go in here and we write in the syntax, you need to write, tell me what tool it is and then give the syntax from ARC Pro Help. So I've given you a link to ARC Pro Help and once you get in there, you just need to search for each of the tools that you wanna use grab the syntax and put a copy of the syntax in here where there are spaces that I've given you. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this logic of these general steps. So this is plotting out your workflow, which is something we do with just about any GIS project. If we're given a task, we write out the number of steps that we need and we identify the data sets that we need. So we're gonna take each of these general steps and convert them into steps in our program. So you're gonna walk through each of these steps and type out the code here that accomplishes each of those steps. All right, so you're gonna do that and you're gonna review your script, you're gonna run it if you have errors. You're well versed at your error handling and debugging at this point. Um, when I did this, I had a couple of errors too. Common ones are misspelling your variable names, not having your print statement set up properly, um, and sometimes not having your quotation marks done properly. So just get in there, update that and get it working. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn in your script that you've just written in that guided activity, and then just the output window showing that it ran successfully. All right, so that's gonna be the same logic as what you're gonna do with spatial queries. You're gonna watch a short video, you're gonna have an activity that goes through all of the, um, the, the steps to accomplish the script that was in the video. 
All right, same thing that you just did for attribute queries. Review the script, run the script, and then you're going to turn in the script here, the script itself, and then also the image from the output. And then the... Okay, and then next we're going to come to module 16.6 which is going to be talking about how do we combine these attribute and spatial queries. So how do we do these multi-step geoprocessing strings that isn't just taking the output of one and putting it into another, but we have selections that are being worked with. So we have a selected set that we then want to pass on to another operation. That's what you're going to talk about, what the video is going to talk about here. And again, you're going to build the script that's inside of this video where we're going to do an attribute query that then gets fed into a spatial query. Same structure here again, think through the general steps, and then you are going to step by step build out this script and then turn it in. All right, so after you do all that, your big assignment for this module is for you to go and do a spatial query assignment that's specific to some data for the city of Oxford. Now it is not authoritative data, but in general, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take our LBRS address points, which are just points for every address in the county of Butler County here locally. And you're gonna have a data set of the city limits of the city of Oxford. And I'm gonna ask you to do an attribute query that selects out all of the residential points within that LBRS data, all the residential addresses and buildings. And then once you have all of those residential points for the whole county selected, I want you then to do a spatial selection that, that reselects only those residential selections that are within the boundaries of the city of Oxford. So an attribute and a spatial selection. Your activities leading up to this have guided you through how to do this exact operation right here. So download the, the document here that has your assignment details. Download the data that you need so that you're going to use a new data set. You're not using your Exercise 07 data anymore. You're going to use some data that I have provided here. And then you just need to see the assignment for all of the details of what you need to turn in. So there are multiple things that you'll need to turn in for this assignment. And that's how you're gonna round out this module, which is taking everything that you have just walked through and practiced and put it to use here in this assignment. And then when you go to the next button, you will very clearly see that you are done with this module and you have learned a tremendous amount about how to do those attribute and spatial queries. So as always, if you have any questions as you move through the content, don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions. And I look forward to hearing from you.